Good morning. I just wanted to go over our announcements for this coming week uh, with you. I'm going to just try to go over them straight through without commentary so that it will go a little faster. I want to first of all thank everyone uh, who came out yesterday for the uh, parish cleanup day. Um, if you notice your pews or uh, for the moment uh, the spiders have uh, been encouraged to go elsewhere, but they are persistent. So here's the thing, keep coming and coming back and we'll get rid of the spiders, okay? But um, I want to thank everybody who came yesterday. Uh, next week, Bishop Chip will be with us, as well as our homecoming celebration, which is next Sunday, the 4th of uh, September. And uh, there's a sign-up sheet for the potluck that's in the parish hall. So if you haven't signed up, please uh, do so, so that we can uh, make sure that there's plenty of food for yourself and to share. We do have a vestry meeting uh, right after worship today. We'll meet upstairs. The air conditioner is on up there, and I think it's comfortable as we can sit around the table. There continues to be a special offering today um, for the Jerusalem Fund, those churches that lost their property, and that offering plate is right up here. Also, uh, I want to solicit your input uh, as we have a vestry meeting today. I was asked the question about the offering plates, and the question was basically this, Father Michael, will we go back to passing the offering plates like we have in the past? And I said, well, we'll address that at the vestry meeting, but I would love to hear your input on whether or not that's something you would like to happen or not. So at the end of the service, Bruce has already voted, but at the end of the service, uh, please let me know if you're comfortable passing the plate and we'll take that up as we discuss it with the uh, vestry uh, at our meeting. Uh, also this Wednesday, we resume the Noonday Eucharist. And so if you have the ability and are able to come, join us at noon on Wednesday for basically a 30-minute, no more than 30-minute uh, worship service and Eucharist in the chapel. Also this Wednesday in the evening at 6 o'clock, we'll resume our Bible study. So Eucharist, uh, weekday Eucharist and Bible study on Wednesdays resumes this week. The men's group that met on Thursday went extremely well. You can talk to Gary about that, but it went very well. And I encourage you guys to, to come and support it. It's always the last Thursday of the month. And again, as I mentioned last week, uh, for the ladies, if you're interested in a ladies group, uh, please speak with me and I'll be glad to encourage that any way I can. Uh, Lewis Jackson will be speaking this Thursday morning at 9.30 on crops, soil, and uh, the current climate events, if I understand that correctly. Uh, so come out and hear Lewis at 9.30 for coffee and biscuits and, uh, and, uh, and a chance to discuss that a little bit. Uh, you'll hear as we get to the prayers of the people today, I will pray by name for the churches that have lost their property. So I'm not going to go over that now. I'll go over that in the prayers. And lastly, Father Ahmad Basilius who's been with us before. He is the Archdeacon for the Diocese of Egypt, Alexandria, is where, he's ha uh, host, uh, where he is housed. Uh, he'll be our guest at Holy Cross once again on Sunday, September the 18th. And so we be uh, looking forward and anticipating uh, Father Imad uh, being with us uh, that Sunday. Well, that's all of our announcements, so we'll begin in just a moment with the ringing of the bell and invite you to stand and sing our opening hymn.
of your Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Please join with me on the top of the next page for our collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. The first reading this morning is from Ecclesiastes, um, chapter 10, verses 7 through 18. Arrogance is hateful before the Lord, before people, and injustice is out of tune to both. So severity passes from nation to nation on account of injustice and insolence and wealth. Why would dust and ash act arrogantly? For even in life his bowels decay. A long illness baffles the physician. The king of today will die tomorrow. For when a man is dead, he will inherit creeping things and wild beasts and worms. The beginning of a person's pride is to depart from the Lord. His heart has forsaken his maker. For the beginning of pride is sin, and the man who clings to it will pour out ab abnonitions. 
Therefore the Lord brought upon them extraordinary afflictions and destroyed them utterly. The Lord has cast down the thrones of rulers and has seated the lowly in their place. The Lord has plucked up the roots of nations and has planted the humble in their place. The Lord has overthrown the lands of the nations and has destroyed them to the foundations of the earth. He has removed some of them and destroyed them and has extinguished the memory of them from the earth. Pride was not created for human beings, nor fierce anger for those born of women. The word of the God. The psalm this morning is Psalm 112. We will respond by whole verse. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the one who fears the Lord, who has great delight in his commandments. Riches and plentiness shall be in his house, and his righteousness shall endure forever. It is good for him to be generous in lending and to guide his word with discretion. For he shall never be moved, and the righteous shall be kept in everlasting He will not be afraid of evil tidings, for his heart is steadfast and trusts in the Lord. His heart is established and will not fear. At last he shall see his desires on his enemies. He has given, given freely to the poor, and his righteousness endures forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. The ungodly shall see it and shall be angry. He shall gnash his teeth and waste away. The desire of the ungodly shall perish. The New Testament reading this morning is from Hebrews chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. <clears throat> Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. For thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison, as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. The word of the Lord. you would please stand for our gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to dine at the house of the ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. Now he told a parable to those who were invited. When he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you're invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin, you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go. And sit in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. Then Jesus also said to the man who had invited him, When you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ.
entitled 13 Habits of Humble People. And I'm not going to go, I'm going to list them, but I invite you to go on a search engine if you want to read his thoughts about these 13 habits. But I do want to highlight them because they lead into uh, this teaching today. And these 13 Habits of Humble People from Forbes Magazine is, first of all, they're situationally aware. They're aware of where they are, who they are, and the circumstances that they find themselves. They retain relationships. They're relational, not just for the moment, but for the long term. They make decisions that are difficult with seemingly ease. They put others first before themselves. They listen. They are curious. They speak their minds. They remember to say the right thank you. And they begin sentences with things about you and not about the I. They accept, <coughs> they accept feedback willingly. They assume responsibility. They ask for help. Those are the 13 habits of humble people seen from a businessman and for a business audience. What I would summarize is how to describe yourself on a resume is I'm a team player and a team leader is what I would seek to be. That's, that's, that's the habits of a humble person. I say that because so often we don't want to speak and think about humility. In other words, when you do a resume, I already gave you an example, it's all of what I can do for you, and shame on you and your company will suffer if you don't hire me. It's all about me. But here, a businessman has recognized habits of humility, and you will hear in these habits of humility great strength. When I was reading through this, I thought of Queen Elizabeth. She's a naturally curious person. She's always asking others about who are you and what do you do. And she's not afraid to speak her mind. They're, she's not afraid to say thank you and be gracious. All of these habits of leadership from a situation and position of humility, not pride. Today is a continuation of the theme that was introduced last week, or at least since I got back from France by me last week. And that is to look at the reading our first lesson today from Ecclesiastes. Arrogance is hateful before the Lord. He goes on to say in verse 12 and 13, the beginning of a person's cries is to depart from the Lord. His heart is forsaken his maker. For the beginning of pride is sin. And so the teaching today is that pride is sin. Humility, on the other hand, is a blessing. How does this work out? Well, first of all, the author of Ecclesiastes uh, invites us to ask the question, well, what causes, what cause does a person have to even think they're right? That's what the rest of that teaching is about. Why would you even think, oh man, oh woman, that you have cause to be prideful? After all, he mentions in verse 9 that we are dust. Remember what we say or said to us on Ash Wednesday? Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return? The author of this first lesson is telling us, look, we are made from dust, and we, come, we go back to dust. We have illnesses that we seek a position and others to help us, but ultimately they're temporary. Here is the fate of every human being is to die. We don't control these things. When we look at countries, we see countries rise, we see countries fall, we see people with afflictions and various uh, things that happen to them, and we're reminded by the author in verse 18, pride was not created for human beings. It is above our pay grade. The writer of the first lesson is telling us pride is not something we are created for and God hates it. So we're left with the teaching on understanding we need to do what Jesus teaches us, what the scriptures teach us, which is to be people of humility. And with that true humility comes great strength. Great strength because it doesn't rely on us. It relies on God. If there's any verse that I want you to really pull away the thought, I would like you to pull away from today. It's a comparison. 
comparison because it says the same thing. If you look at your readings today, look at Psalm 112 and, and look at verse 7. Here's what Psalm 112 verse 7 says. He will not be afraid. Now we're referring to a human being, the psalmist, the one who's the, not talking about God here. He will not be afraid of any evil tidings. For his heart, or her heart, is steadfast and trust in the Lord. Now I want you to see how that verse is complemented and restated in Hebrews 13, 6. And actually, you can look at it as part of five. A quote from God. I, I, I quote, I will never leave you or forsake you. We can say confidently, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man, what can mankind do to me? If we understand the nature of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and if we are created by the Lord God Almighty, that we are loved by the Lord God Almighty, that our destiny is guaranteed by the Lord God Almighty, Almighty. look at verse 2, a memory verse. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some of them entertain angels. Our response when we follow a, a life of humility is not to seek to be entertained, but to care for others, like Abraham and Sarah cared for the angels who came to them before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Do not neglect to host, to, 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 to show hospitality. Not to seek to be served. Oh God, you showed up, you sent your angels to do this for me. But no, let us prepare a meal for you. Look at verse 8. Again, the nature of God, the nature of Jesus Christ, His one and only Son. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's a fundamental understanding of the nature of the second person of the Trinity, which reflects the nature of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that God doesn't change. We're all to change. That's one of the fundamental <laughs> points of disagreement we have with our society today is, and within churches in our society, who say things like this, the church needs to change and adopt to society, so it will be relevant. It's a wrong answer and a wrong response. The church is always counter-cultural and invites people to change and conform to the will of God. It's hard. We talked about that last week. The road to destruction is broad and wide. Come on in. But to come to God's heavenly country is narrow. But everyone can enter if they'll humble themselves. They'll turn sideways if they will change to that which is the unchangeable of God. That humility will lead us and we can help lead people toward God's heavenly country based that relationship that we're called to have with Jesus Christ who never changes. And so when we look at our gospel today, it's not a lesson about how not to be embarrassed. That's a misunderstanding of the parable that Jesus says, you know, so that with shame you'll take the lowest place and so if you really want to be standing out with people, pretend to be humble and then you'll be, you'll be elevated. No, this is not a, this is not a social climbing. Jesus. This is a teaching of a fact that those who would <coughs> seek to exalt themselves will ultimately find themselves humble. Whether it be at a wedding party or somewhere, those who seek by pride to exalt themselves will be humble. They will die. They will get sick. They will be told you're sitting in my seat. Somehow, someway, they will be Humility is a strength. Go back to Jack Ross, who gives us 13 characteristics. Go back to Jesus, who says that we who are humble are blessed. Why? Because we have that unchangeable perspective of life. What can humanity do? 
You would please stand. I invite you to turn to page 127 of your Book of Common Prayer, page 127. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to kneel as you're able, and Melissa will lead us in the prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world, saying, Hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For Foley, our archbishop, for Chip, our bishop, and for Michael, our priest, and for all the clergy and the people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others, Lord, in your mercy. For our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith, Lord, in your mercy. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Joseph, our president, and Henry, our governor, Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially Joy, Glenn, John, Graylin, Natalie, Bruce, Rachel, Randall, Phyllis, Pearl, Kevin, Angela, Koa, Marcia, David, Garnett, and Robin. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who have departed this life and the certain hope of the resurrection, especially Natalie Wood and Caroline Kennedy, and thanksgiving let us pray, Lord, in your mercy. At this time, I invite your prayers, petitions, and thanksgiving as the Holy Spirit places in your hearts and on your minds. and congregations who are lost, who have lost or are losing their property. We pray especially for Christ Church, Mount Pleasant. Their last service of their church is today. We pray for them, and Father Ted, and those who will be leading worship at a different house of worship next uh, in the coming weeks. We pray for Good Shepherd Charleston, Holy Trinity Charleston, St. Bartholomew, Hartsville, St. James, James Island, St. John's, John's Island, St. David's, Sherall, St. Matthew's, Fort Mott, and St. Camp, St. Christopher, Camp and Comfort Center, as they will be leaving their property, our, our diocese will be leaving, leaving that property uh, on the first of Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continuing on page 130, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to Him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to Him. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving and full of acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propiti propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I invite you to stand as we pass the peace from where we are standing. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. God's peace. Our offertory sentences from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. It's an invitation to examine our lives and our actions. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Our offertory hymn is hymn 691.
be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week <coughs> overcame death and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
that Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed once for all on the cross. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. We do not presume to come to this, your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean like his body, and our souls washed in his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. <laughs> Blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. By the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The first chalice is for intention. The second chalice is for those who would like to receive the record of the cup. The body of Christ, bread of heaven. 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 Body of Christ, bread of heaven.
continue on page 137 of the Book of Common Prayer, page 137. I invite you and encourage you to join with me in the post-communion prayer. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Before the dismissal, I will invite you next door for hospitality and fellowship and a chance to uh, get to know each other. And I'd like to welcome our guest today for joining us and encourage you to come next door uh, for fellowship. Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Our final hymn is hymn 525, 525.